Hi, Genevieve Jacobs from Region Media at the Museum of Australian Democracy at Old Parliament House with one of the most fascinating, quirky and intricate little exhibitions you will ever see, Honeybees, Democracy and Me. Cormac Farrell is with me. He's the head beekeeper at Parliament House up on the hill. Now, Cormac, the premise here is that this all springs from one William Yates, the member for Holt, who on April Fool's Day in the 60s, asked the Speaker of the House, Billy Sneddon, if he could bring some bees onto the premises. Now, apparently, Sneddon thought it was a joke. William Yates was not joking. No, he was dead serious, but it was a fantastic trick and it worked beautifully. A couple of days later, bees arrived. Yeah. And look, we've had the Yates family here today for the launch of the exhibition and they remember this very fondly because apparently their father used to go wandering around with, with hives of bees, including delivering them up to the lodge. But... One of the things that, that's sort of significant about this is not only that this is the bush capital, that we're surrounded by bush and flowers and so on and so forth, but that bees are also democratic in and of themselves, aren't they? Yeah, they make their major decisions by voting on them. So it's actually a really lovely fit and a whimsical way to highlight that the, the House of Democracy is also has been has a 70 million year old tradition stretching back to the time of the dinosaurs of these insects using voting in nature to make really critical decisions, life or death ones. Well, well just explain that to me a little bit more because I, I guess we've all grown up thinking that the Queen is in charge of the hive and you know you could make some parallels with parliamentary democracy there and the way that we run it in this country. But in fact, the workers have rights, don't they? Yes, yeah, the workers are in charge. So the colony makes all the decisions. The Queen makes almost no decisions. So it's really amazing. It's, it's the big mental shift you have to make when managing bees is to realise that you are not managing any, you're not trying to sort out any lead bee. The, the colony is the decision maker. So they can actually decide to get rid of the Queen, chuck her out, murder her in fact. They absolutely will kill the queen if she's not cutting the mustard. So it is all, it is the, the hive, the swarm is, is the decision maker and is everything is for the swarm. Yeah, well, I reckon William Matz might have been onto something here. A bit of a grim warning for a few prime ministers past and, and present. But um, comment, tell me about beekeeping at Parliament House because this is an ongoing tradition and it seems as if we might have been one of the first countries in the world to, to get into this in an institutional sense. Yeah, I'm, look, I'm pretty sure that William Yates was the first person to, was part of the first parliament to keep bees in sort of an organised fashion. And we absolutely drew on that when we were setting up the modern apiary. We tried to have it roughly where he would have had his, his last apiary. He had to move them up to what was called Camp Hill, which is where we now have New Parliament House. So, and we've tried to absolutely keep in that ethos of using the honey for official gifts and trying to get as many people involved and to understand that broader landscape function that the bees have. And that was, that's drawing from his, his original ethos was to try and get this idea of a bush capital, but more than that, this understanding of how important bees are for broader society and the inspiration we can draw from them. And, and speaking of the inspiration, one of the features of this exhibition, like many of the things that happen at Moad, is that it's very participatory. So we've got in the room behind me the hive mind, which is full of people's ideas about how we should run the country, everything from be kind to people, help those who need it, to even eat the rich. Um, <laughs> When, when we say the hive mind, I guess we're referring to what you've just described, that, that intrinsic democracy among insects. Yeah, it is about uh, understanding that parallel because I think people seem to get, often have this idea that democracy is something unique to humans, and it really isn't. There's, there's lots of insects in particular that have been in these enormously successful, big, organised societies, and that's how they organise themselves and make decisions. It's that collective, and putting yourself above you're the whole above yourself is one of the critical things and that's one of the things that we see in service these days for d democracy is that the parliamentarians the the really successful ones do often they are, it is a life of service for them yeah, look we are surrounded by beekeeping equipment although we have just heard William Yates uh, William Yates son Peter say that his dad didn't really believe in wearing protective equipment which is pretty interesting so just finally how much honey do you produce up there and just tell us about the uh, somewhat abortive attempt to produce gin. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, we, we've successfully produced uh, alcohol off, we've produced mead and vodka off the, off the hives and the honey, but in an average year we would get 100 kilos, and in a really tough year we'd get as little as 20 to 30 kilos. So we only take the surplus. The bees make the honey for themselves and we don't interfere with that. We only take the honey they don't need. So yeah, up to about 100 kilos, and it goes into a range of pretty wonderful things. We have gift jars for VIPs. When there's a surplus, we have gift jars available for the general public in the gift shop. It also goes into official dinners, so it's part of the ingredients for dinners, and we've got some pastries out there today made with honey from the hive. So it's, it's kind of lovely what you can do with it, and how you, people can then be connected to their local environment, because Parliament itself, the 30 hectares of native gardens surrounding Parliament, is run with basically no pesticides. So the garden team there use a really sophisticated integrated pest management system, and that means that that honey is absolutely pure. There are no pesticides in it, there's no contaminants. It's some of the highest quality honey you can get. Well, Australian honey is among the highest quality honey in the world because we're, we're free of pests and diseases, and of course it's a... a democratic paradise. Cormac, great to talk to you and I, I guess we encourage people to come down and think about democracy, about the balance and order of the natural world, about Australia's role of leadership and also about this wonderful story of William Yates and the hives of bees carted around Canberra in the 1960s. I'm Genevieve Jacobs and this is Region Media.